In this game, I will be asking a popular YouTuber about five different Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Each round, the guests will have five questions about the round's chosen card. Each answer is worth a point until the final round where they must guess that card's price. The better the answer, the more points the guest receives. Can your favorite YouTuber win the ultimate prize? You will just have to watch to find out. If you want to win the giveaway for this video, which is half of the prize money won during today's game show, just like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, and let me know down below who do you want to see on the next episode of Guess That Price Season 2? Welcome back to Guess That Price Season 2, Episode 3. We have the legendary Chaotic Meatball, fresh from the realms of Pokemon challenges. How you doing? I am doing fantastic, Ruxin. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. We are recording this on a Chaotic Meatball schedule, so it is uh, almost 10 p.m. my time. Hey, uh, listen, listen. I initially pitched 8 p.m., but you had to go eat dinner with your parents. <laughs> Yeah, 8 p.m. Yeah, so middle of the day for Sean, you know, that kind of stuff, but right. totally fine. Actually, cause... my sleep schedule's fixed right now. I'm getting oh. up at like 9 a.m. It's actually kind of nice. Okay, you're, do you're doing a good job then. Uh, I, I won't throw you under the bus anymore then because I guess it's more my schedule. Don't worry, it'll fall we're... off in like two weeks. It'll be up at 2 p.m. again. <laughs> yeah, makes makes sense. All right, so Sean knows how this works. You've seen the first two episodes. If you have any questions, just let me know. We can hop right into it. We have five cards that you will be guessing today. You have the potential to win up to a thousand total dollars, 500 for yourself, 500 for the viewers. So if you could win that crazy $500 prize for the viewers, they're going to love you. So let's just see if you can do that. We're going to start off with the first question. Question. We have a reflect bounder is your first card. Oh, reflect bounder. That one I'm slightly familiar with. Uh, I know it from goat format. I know it was limited there. Okay, so so since Let's you are see. you are somewhat familiar, do you know the year and the set of the original printing? That's how you can get two points here. Okay, so I'm already gonna go for a lifeline because I don't know the set. All right, so going for your first lifeline, that's your only lifeline you'll get for the year in the set. The lifeline here, uh, I, I probably should have a better lifeline for this because it either gives it away or it doesn't at all. So how am I, I'm gonna give you one word from the set. So let's just see if, what can I give you that won't give it away? I think either way, you're basically gonna get this one for free. We'll see if you know the year. The I'll give you a word is dark in the set. Dark. That's not the full word, so it could easily be. No, that is uh, that's the full word. That's one of the one of the words in the name of, of the set. One of the words in the name of the set, but yeah. not a potential full word. Like if I said if it was legacy of darkness, because technically dark is no, in the no, name. I, I it's the full word. OK, OK, so it is not legacy so, of darkness. I'll tell you that. Did they originally print this in? Dark Beginning or Dark Revelation. I don't remember which one was first. Um, ooh, this is this is a hard one. I really I really thought this one was going to give it away. It's kind of a 50 50 coin toss on that. There are a few sets that could, that could fall under that, but it is there are only a few options left, like you've eliminated Legacy of Darkness and many others. OK, so I'm going to go with I, I think it's Dark Beginning 1 2004. Final answer. Final answer. Sean, you forgot about Dark Crisis. Oh, I did forget about Dark Crisis. See, that's that's the curse of them not reprinting it with the 25th anniversary boxes. If, if they did that, I would have I would have remembered it. Yeah, that's that's true. They didn't reprint this one. And also painfully, it came out December 1st, Two, 2003. 2003. Yep. So you were a month off. You were when I said dark, I almost said crisis. I was like, there's nothing that even has crisis. So I said dark. I even forgot about dark beginning and dark revelation. So when you went to those, I was like, oh, he's off the track. He's yeah, missed this I one. was like, wait, is it in a side? Did they put in a side set first? Uh, but no, that that makes sense. I, I'm surprised I completely blanked on that one, to be fair. That's OK. First question, worst question. We're going to you're going to do better this time. Do you know the rarity of the original printing from Dark Crisis? It was an ultra rare. That's one. that one's easy. OK, easy, easy point there. So you're you're back on track. You've got a point. Now let's go to the multiple choice, which has been one of the harder parts of the quiz in the first couple episodes. So number of printings. So I, I'm going to clarify here because Dark Crisis did ha and while it didn't have the booster box reprint, it does have a lot of like Dark Crisis prints. But to make it easy, all Dark Crisis prints are counted as one. No matter how many times it's been reprinted, we're going to put okay. it as one. So that way we're not going to have to like total up that all those reprints and stuff. So if it's ever been Dark Crisis, that's just one printing. So keep that in mind. OK. Reflect Bounder has been printed either A, are there four 
printings, B, five printings, C, six printings, or D, seven printings. Interesting. Um, so we know the Ultra that's in Dark Crisis. We know, unfortunately, I really am not familiar with Reflect Bounder too much. I believe it's in a battle pack. Uh, it's not in Speed Duel. I believe, it, no, I don't recall it being reprinted in Rage of Ra. It would have made sense to be there. Uh, I think it might have been a either, it might have been a common in there. I think I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark and go for let's go four. Four, four total printing. printings is your final answer. Yeah. All right. The correct answer for Dark Crisis uh, reflect. I say Dark Crisis reflect bounder is six printings. Oh, it was six. Oh, geez. You were thought it had a battle pack. It does not have a battle pack. You said it, you didn't think it had speed duel. It actually does have a speed duel print. Okay, so I flipped the, I, why is that in a speed duel with 4,000 life points? It's a common in Streets of Battle City. So be pretty crazy oh, okay. if you get like the, the reflect thing. That's kind of crazy. And then the other printings are Dark Revelation Volume 1, Champion Pack 1, Structure Deck Cyber Dragon Revolution, Turbo Pack 2, and then Dark Crisis, and they, there's a couple other Dark Crisis as well. Gotcha. Okay. Pretty tough. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to guess that it was a had a structure deck printing and a Cyber Dragon. That that I never would have gotten. Those Turbo yeah, Packs are always machine, super tricky. I guess. I mean, 2014 structure deck. What better machines are you gonna put in there? Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's go on to the final question. You have one point so far, but you can earn up to three points, four if you get it exactly right on this one. So, do you know the price of a Dark Crisis Ultra Rare First Edition Near Mint Reflect? Bounder. I know that the ultra rares around this time are a little pricey for the ones that are played in like GOAT. I was looking at stuff like Blackluster Soldier on Boy of the Beginning out of IOC, but this one, I'm kind of unsure what it could be. It definitely feels like a type of card that's like really niche because it's it's at one in GOAT, goat like I, I said before. Uh, I believe... You have lifelines. Uh, I don't want to burn them on this one. And then like, I, I already burned one and it didn't help me because I was dumb. <laughs> but if it helps, you know, then it, it's always worth it. It's, you just got to get the points out of it. You know what? I'm going to go with a base $100 for the Dark Crisis First Dead Near Mint. All right. You locking in $100? $100. All right. Chaotic Meatball, Mr. Sean. This card is... I'm going to double check this before I say it. I, I, I just double check this just to make sure because this seems really low. It's $18. Really? Yeah, I just look. There's three at $18 that you could buy right now. No, there's actually four, which seems extremely low. No, I don't I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Are you does kidding Does that not me? seem Is super that low? That seems extremely cheap, especially when comparing to like other... There's one at $17.85, two at $17.85. These are verified and, sellers too. And this is like the the actual original. You're not looking yeah, at the... No, first edition. The 25th uh, anniversary. You're not yep. looking at the EN. First this ed. Is baseline. Yeah. That is insane. I put this on here earlier. And then when you were like answering, I'm like, wow, is this right? I was like, this just seems super low for a Dark Crisis first at Ultra, especially a card that you could actually use in GOAT format. I guess being right? at one and that might be a card I go and like buy after this. This is. Yeah, that seems like a, yeah, a very good card to buy. I mean, it might have gone down because of the secret rare out of Streets of Battle City, but. Well, based I, I on this know, in the might... last year, it's gone down three dollars. So not too much. Oh. Uh, okay. based on the TCG player start chart. So that's a tough one. I mean, I definitely would have guessed higher kind of like you did. So let's go on to number two. Let's see if this one will be a little bit better towards you. Ooh. All right, card number two, Sean, is Drill Warrior. Oh, Drill Warrior. Ah, yes. Year and set, do you know? Year and set. I believe this was out of Absolute Power Force, which would have been right in 2010, right before like the Edison cutoff point because it's like Raging Battle, then it's Absolute Power Force. I'm gonna go with Absolute Power Force 2010. Final answer? Yep, final answer. Well, you have just tripled your points, basically. You're up to three points. You got both of those correct. Edison format aficionado right here, baby. <laughs> yes, February 16th, 2010 was the release of Absolute Power Force. Edison coming in clutch for you. So you're up to three total points. It's gonna be four when I say it's a super rare. Yeah, now rarity. Do you know the rarity? I just said it's a super rare. At least that's the rarity I remember it in. If it's in something else, that's going to screw me up. <laughs> okay, so you're locking in super rare? I'm locking in super. Sean, 
Was it a special edition super and it was a secret in this set? Sean. I'm going to be very sad. You would have been wrong on both counts. Was it an ultra? It's an ultra and an ultimate in this set. So you oh. could have said either of those and you said Man. super and secret. I I, I think I, I had the, the super rare printings. I could have sworn they came out of Absolute Power Horse, but that's fine. Well, I will not be revealing any information about other printings because that's your next question. The number of printings for the Drill Warrior. You have four options here. A, three printings. B, four printings. <laughs> C, five printings, or D, six printings. So three, four, five, six, those are your options. Okay, so I think we can eliminate uh, five and six because I know that there's the the ultra, there's the ultimate now, and I know that there is the super rare. Um, I do not believe there is a common printing of this card. There might have been. I recall when I was buying, like I was building a lot of like Edison pre-constructed decks. I built like 16 of them and I needed like a ton of copies of this. And the cheapest one was that special edition super. So I'm going to go with three printing. Locking in A3 printings. We're going to lock in A3 printings. You might want to go back and tell yourself to buy the rare out of Duelist Pack 10, you say three, because that seems to be the cheapest option at 25 cents. Really? How did I end up with so many super rares? The answer is C, five. I think maybe you were buying foils. You wanted foils only or something like that? No, it might have been just that they were cheaper at the time. It was like a year ago. The thing is, the it looks like the supers are about 90 cents, so that is possible. They're not that much more. But there's also a Legendary Collection 5D secret rare as well. So you might have okay. thought of the secret seeing that card. That's so where that secret rare comes You from. looked at okay. all the wrong versions by accident. I, I mixed up all of the sets. I knew that there were different, like I knew there was a super, there was a secret. Uh, I just forgot about the other ones. Well, you nailed all the random ones, but uh, but you didn't know about, well, actually, to be fair, the Duelist Pack 10 you say 3 is pretty random. So that one is random as well, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. The more important question is the price. Do you know the price of the Ultimate Rare First Edition from Absolute Power Force? Ultimate Rare First Edition. Yeah, the ulti. Okay. We're asking about the ultimate rare, not the ultra, nothing else. That one, I do think it, it is relatively cheaper than most of like the other synchros from uh, from this time because it was basically just in quick draw dandy warrior uh, and still is like when you're looking at it from current Edison players. I'm going to lock in that card around let's go with 35 dollars that seems reasonable you're locking them in quick like you're just like bam locked in I, I feel relatively confident about this one i didn't feel that confident about reflect bounder because my only basis was like big ultra rares from the time like i think bls is like first ed is like 170 dollars or something right now okay so 35 is locked in 35 is locked in all right this card, Ultimate Rare out of Absolute Power Force First Edition is, you got the second number right. Uh-oh. It's not 35, it's $55. Ah, that's rough. So you're just outside of a point right there. Yeah, w was I was I thinking the Unlim? I feel like the Unlim's probably around there. Uh, let's check out the Unlim real quick. Let's see what it's looking at. You, you probably are pretty close in that. It is just under 30, 29.50, so 30. Ah for the unlib, so you are, so close. and then there's only a couple listings at 30 and then it goes to 39. So you would have been right on the dot basically for that. Well, we can't, we can't hit all bangers here. Hope that some of my studying helped for the next three. First two started, not great. I mean, you have three points, but that's okay. You have three full cards left. If you get hot right here, you could still probably have the best score. So let's see if you can do that. Third card, instant fusion. Mm. Instant fusion. Do okay. you know the original set and the original year of that set? Okay, so I know that the set was Cyberdark Impact. I need to remember what year Cyberdark Impact came out. I believe it was 2007, because I think this was uh, like right around Tactical Evolution and um, like Gladiator's Assault. I think it was between those. It could have been somewhere around there, but I'm gonna lock it in there. Uh, it's Cyber Dark Impact uh, 2007. Instant Fusion was released in Cyber Dark Impact. Okay. On November 15th, 2006. <laughs> November 16th, dang it. You were a month and a half off, but you still did get the set. So you got a point. Uh, I'm, a, I'm happy with that. Not bad. You were very close. 2006. I mean, you're in the right range. You're just barely, barely off. Do you know the original printing 
rarity. So I, I know that this was a common uh, in the set because for some reason the set was full of like great cards later. Are you locking that in? I am absolutely locking in that it was a common. Well, that was a good choice because you have another point. So two points on the instant fusion so far. You ding, have ding, now ding. gathered five total points onto the multiple choice. This one, you're flying through this one. Even if you didn't get half of that first one, you're still answering them quickly. Let's see about the multiple choice for number of printings. Here are your options. A, eight printings. B, 10 printings. C, 12 printings. Or D, 14 printings. Jeez, that is a lot to try to remember. I know the OTS Ultimate Rare exists. I had one. Uh, and then I got rid of it when I uh, when Prank Kids got banned. <laughs> I believe there, of course, there's the common from Cyberdark Impact. Uh, Two I down. I believe there's a dual terminal version, so that puts us up to three. Um, is there any other tournament pack versions of this card? I don't believe it's an OTS. Of course, they, they if they put it in ulti, they're probably not going to put it in any other ones. I do remember that it was in raw yellow mega pack. That's, oh, did I, did I say was am i up to three or four you're up to four by your count god if i could if i can get at least like eight out of the way that would be nice well then you'll be to the first option so that would be good yeah <laughs> if i could have a one in three <laughs> chance instead of a one in four chance i think if you can eliminate uh, any that will help you but you know there's another way to eliminate options as well that you have not used yet let, let's let's burn the lifeline on this one i don't feel like trying to remember that many printings of instant fusion <laughs> The last two, um, we're going to eliminate two options, and that is 10 and 14. Okay, so I'm left with 8 and 12. Yeah. Well, because it was in Raw Yellow Mega Pack, I believe it was also in uh, Legendary Collection GX, so that would put us up to 5. Oh, I remember there being other common versions of the card. I think it was in the Shadal structure? Because I remember that being one of the first things I picked up when I actually got into the game back in 2020, was that... That puts us up to you're at seven. Six. six by your count. I'm not going to confirm if they're right or not, but you're up to six. I know there's the Magnificent Maven's Ultra. That one I can I can put it, uh, aside. I know there's a super rare somewhere. I think it's Fusion Enforcers. That would make sense. Putting it, putting instant fusion in fusion enforcers makes makes sense. That's interesting. Um, that that <laughs> fusion enforcers in a in a fusion car. That's pretty crazy. I know, right? <laughs> Insane logic. <laughs> um, that's eight. If I you get one more, then you're you're saying it's twelve. Assuming you're all right. It is twelve. I remembered. They have the big text astral pack version, which is my favorite because I have old man eyes. I'm going with twelve. All right, you're locking in twelve. Locking in twelve. You are. Correct. There are 12 printing. That's impressive how you were pulling Let's out all go. those different printings. I am actually pretty familiar with this card, which is I can tell. good. I mean, you know, when you're, I, I think Prank Kids was a long time ago. So the fact that I remembered all that is kind of Do you want to know the other three that you did not list? Because you were correct on all nine that you said. Oh, uh, wow. Really? Holy crap. Yeah, all, uh, you were right <laughs> on all those. And the Astro um, Pack was Astro Pack 8, the one that you mentioned last. Oh, uh, okay. What were the other printings? Dual Terminal 4. I did I did say the Dual Terminal 1. I knew there was a Dual Terminal 1. Not okay, like maybe, from maybe Dual Terminal didn't mention 1, that one. but there was a Dual Terminal version yeah, okay. of this card. There was another common, like you said, Champion Pack 7. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't have remembered that one. Oh, there's two oh. Astral Packs as well. There's an Astral Pack 2, so there was two different Astral Packs. Oh, okay. Yeah, I okay. wouldn't have remembered that there was two Astral Packs. I just knew that they had a big text one. And that was... I like the big text. The Super <laughs> was the Astral Pack 8. Astral Pack 2 is just another common, so there's multiple commons in this one. So you got that one correct, so you're up to... Are you up to six points now? I believe so. Three, you've got three on, on Instant Fusion, so uh, this one's going well for you. Let's see... You said that you own this card at one point, the OTS4 Ultimate Rare Printing. Let's see if that price is even relevant or if you remember it or if it matches up. I very vehemently doubt it being relevant considering uh, when I bought it, I, uh, Prank Kids was at the top with it, the adventure package. Uh, ever since Kit Kolos got banned, uh, that's probably, this, this card's just not played in any decks right now, which is very unfortunate. It's a cool card. I like it, but uh, let's see if we get it right. So the price of a near mint OTS for ultimate rare. Okay, so when I bought it, it was like 160, which was way too much. And it's probably not that anymore. You do have a lifeline. Do I want to burn the lifeline on this here? I've already burned one here. Um, I still have two left, I believe. I have the... You have the price and then one for rarity. 
Okay, so let's do yeah no let's let's do the uh the lifeline here. It's higher or lower, right? Yeah, so you pick a number, I'll tell you if it's higher or lower than that. Let's do half the price of what I bought it for. How about eighty dollars? This card is more than eighty dollars. Really? Hmm. I couldn't imagine it being much more. I don't I don't anticipate it uh anticipate it breaking triple digits, that's for sure. But okay. it kind of puts me in between like the eighty and ninety nine range. Yeah, you got you got a small range then if you're correct. Well, you know one of them is definitely higher and that if you're correct on that 100, you pretty much pigeonhole it. <laughs> it's always hard guessing these things because it's like a wide range of numbers. There's no options. There's no uh, learning other than, oh, I looked at this card recently. That helped. Yep. <laughs> very hard. It's very hard. Against my better judgment, I think I'm going to go for $85. 85. You want to lock that in? Let's lock it in. Sean. That, I don't like that tone. Is you it bought, higher? You bought this card. I bought I bought this card like two years ago. For $160. You thought it was lower. You know it's higher than 80. And let me tell you, you pigeonholed this thing perfectly because it is $84. I'm so mad that I'm a dollar off. Can you, you include bet shipping in that, please? Four points right there. That's officially the closest guess, I think, in <sighs> season two. One dollar away, but you know what that means? You get three points on this guess because you're within 10%. That puts us up to what, nine points now? So you just went crazy on instant fusion. You just got one, two, three, six points. The max is eight and you were one away on one of the dollars and then you missed the year by a month and a half. So you were that close to having the perfect card and getting eight points. Either way, you are up to, I think, nine points now, which is, uh, I mean, you've made hey, a you big improvement. you said if I go on a hot streak, I mean, I, I'm trying my best. <laughs> it, you're starting good. So let's go to card four. Uh, if you, you could do anything like you just did on the next two, you're going to end up doing pretty well. Number as four. As long as I do better than Alex, you know, if I've binged his <laughs> history of Yu-Gi-Oh! series five times over, I should have the knowledge down. <laughs> you got to beat him, but he does have a 10 point lead on you right now, but you still have mm. a potential to get 16 more points or something okay. like that. So if you could pull that off, it'd be pretty impressive. All right, fourth card. Fourth it's card. another fusion card. Overload fusion. Oh, I was about to say, are you really going to give me Gladiator Beast Heracletos after no. our stupid joke? No, you you know that one too well. I couldn't give it for to you. Co for context, ladies and gentlemen, I was hunting for a maxed out rarity uh, Edison Gladiator Beast deck, and I was only accepting the Turbo Pack 2 Ultimate Rare version of Gladiator Beast Heracletos, and Ruxin had a secret rare from the uh, Gladiator's Assault The original printing, just his, throwing that out there. Yeah, like, he had it in there, it was the first ad, and he's like, hey, you want to buy a secret? I'm like, no, that's not the highest rarity. The ultimate's the, the highest rarity. And I asked him probably 20 times over the course of that tournament if he wanted to buy that secret rare. He never bought it, though, so... He never bought it because I wanted the, <laughs> the stupid he did, ultimate he, rare. Unfortunately, that the original print secret rare first edition, he wanted the reprinted ultimate rare. Big deal. Hey, it, it it looked beautiful and it still does. I love it. I won't lie, it looks really good. But we got to get back on topic here. You got to answer right, what sorry. year and what set was Overload Fusion from. Okay, uh, time to try to remember what year Power of the Duelist came out. That's the green set with uh, Dark Neos on it. That helps, surely. <laughs> yeah, that, no bonus points for that. Oh, that's unfortunate. I know it's Power of the Duelist. I'm going to lock that part in. But the year. The years, the years. I don't think it's 2005 because we had Shadow of Infinity was like, uh, I believe, February. It was 2005. I'm going to be kind of kicking myself. I don't know why I'm leaning towards 2006. Because uh, I always get these GX sets all mixed up, like um, Elemental Energy, the one with Air Neos on it, uh, whatever that was. <laughs> uh, I, I don't remember. The Forbidden Yu-Gi-Oh! Set. set. The Forbidden Yu-Gi-Oh! Set, the red yeah. one. Got it. If I could remember the colors like Alex does, that would help because I don't remember. Um, yeah, that, actually, that color I strategy do. was pretty impressive. I do, I was like, I do okay. remember the colors because I know the modern sets. I know red is... Uh, like if I'm looking at 2020, red was like ignition assault, then yellow was eternity code, then um, green was rise of the duelist. If I do that same logic, uh, going with this era, I think that cyber dark impact was the yellow set. No, it couldn't have been. I, th I think it. I think there's like an or. I think that one's orange or something. I don't remember. <laughs> 
all this deliberation and still I haven't given you an answer. I might I might need a minute or two to think about this. Take your time. Take your time. Okay. All right, I'm just going to lock it in. Power of the Duelist 2007. Let's do 2007. No, no, 2006. I'm doing 2006. I I, I can't. I don't think... I don't know if I should lock in 06 or 07. I know it's one of those. <laughs> you went from 05 to 06. I know it's not. Like, no, oh, I knew it was God. not then 05. you're like 07. So now you have three different years. No, I know it's not 05. I know Overload Fusion is not that old. Because uh, I believe this card is like right around where they released like the Machines Revolt Structure deck, which had like the like the big uh, Chimera Tech Over Dragon. I think I'm going to lock in Power of the Duelist. 2006. All right, you are officially locking it in now? I'm officially locking it in. Sean, after much deliberation, Jeopardy music, thinking about colors, discussing colors, Power of the Duelist, first of all, is correct. So okay. you were right about that, at least. If they had been the wrong set, that. you were thinking that long, it'd have been pretty bad, but... Yeah, that would have been very funny, admittedly. <laughs> it was released on September 1st, 2006. Yes! Uh, it was so funny because you were talking about the yellow set. You're like, Cyberdark Impact. You're like, no, that set wasn't yellow. It, it was yellow. So what, <laughs> for some reason, I was thinking there were like orange sets, which I think Raging Battle is an orange set, which was why I was like, is Cyber, is Cyberdark well, Impact Raging an orange Raging Battle set? is also pretty yellow. So I think they're just yellow, I think. but Probably. Because <laughs> Cyberdark Impact, I think, was the set after this. So I think that you were right on at first, and then you kind of trailed off on that. That, that sounds about right. But you got it right either way, and you got two points. So now do you know the rarity? Uh, So this came in rare and ultimate uh, in Power of the Duelist. You sound pretty confident. Is that a lock-in right there? Yeah. And yes, you are right. Both of those are correct. You only get one point, but you named both Shame. of them. Which is pretty I should get impressive. two. <laughs> Yeah, pretty impressive. Uh, the thing is, though, it's easier because you have two options, so I, you shouldn't get more points. But if you can name both, maybe. But okay, three points there. You're up to 12 now? I am up to 12. Wow, you are you are really making a comeback. You started slow, but these last two have been really good. The fusion cards you seem to know pretty well. But will you know how many times it was printed? Here are your options for the multiple choice. You have A, 11 printings. B, 14 printings. C, 18 printings. Or D, 25 printings. Oh, I know it's not either of those last two. It has definitely not been printed that much. Uh, so you have the rare, you have the ultimate rare, you have uh, the Duelist Pack 4 Zane Truesdale common. I do remember that. I believe this had one of like the later uh, dual terminal prints because I remember it having like the, uh, the big text. That puts us up to four. <laughs> You and your text. Do you remember oh, all no, the, I big love the big text cards? I, if, if there's a card that has big text on it, I, I have it. I love it. It's great. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, I oh, I do remember the Cyber Strike structure had this, uh, the recent Cyber Dark structure. That's five you've named right there, if those are all correct. I know it was in the Speed Duel box uh, as a common. I don't believe it got a secret in there. You have the two that are in Royal Omega Pack, Legendary Collection, GX. Those are pretty easy gimmies. Um, what am I up to? I think that's eight. I think you're at eight for the ones you've named. I think there's like a modern rare version of this card. I don't remember what set it was. It was. It, it had to be one of like the deck building sets or something. I don't think they would have reprinted this in anything like that. Might have been Maze of Memories. I opened a bit of that. You'd think I would remember uh, if it was in that or if it was in something else. But I do remember there is a modern rare printing of this card. I really could have sworn that there was, like, the legendary hero decks. Because I, I could have sworn that that was, like, one of the easy access reprints to Nova. But I don't know if they put that in there. I mean, I, they probably did, but I don't think... Is there even a legendary hero deck of, of Zane? That's what I'm trying to remember of that. Because I know there's three. I know there's three decks in there. I don't remember if Zane was one of them, but if he is, that puts us at 11 and I can't remember anymore. For the sake of brevity, I'm going to lock in 11. 11 prints. You're sure about that? You don't think you forgot anything? You think those were all right? You didn't forget anything? I don't think so. If I forgot one of them and it ends up being that I forgot three of them, I'm going to be very sad. All right. So you're officially locking it in then at 11. We're going to lock it in. Sean. I, the, the tone, every time you say it, it freaks me out. <laughs> How do you remember all of these? Was I correct? 
The only one you were not correct on was you said you said the name legendary dragon decks, then you changed it to legendary hero decks. It was in the legendary dragon decks. <laughs> I was right on the first. Why would it be in the legendary dragon decks? I mean, I guess cyber dragon, sure. But yeah, it's you said Zane. I mean, legendary dragon, a cyber dragon. So it makes sense. But every other one <laughs> that you named the structures they were in, the speed duel. You even got maze, which you questioned for a second. But it was in maze as a I rare. I did remember that there was there was a modern <laughs> uh, rare printing. But yeah, I did I did open quite a bit of that. Oh. Oh was, my, was that digging. was insane. You just started picking them off. Like you knew three and then you slowly just, oh yeah, there's that one and there's that. You were right about all of them. I don't even have to mention them. So yes, you got a point there. Another was I literally points. correct on like the sets that they were in or something? No, you didn't miss any. Like you said, Power of the Duelist 2, obviously. You said Legendary Collection 2, the Royal Omega Pack, the Structured X Cyber life. Strike. I have been on... I have been studying Yu-Gi-Oh! for far too long. The Duelist Pack for Zane Truesdale. Hey, I remembered that because Future Fusion's also in there. I mean, it would make sense that it would be in there. Yeah, so you you nailed that one. So okay, now if you can get the price here, you're gonna you're gonna be killing it. So we're asking the price of the first edition ultimate rare from Power of the Duelist. First edition ultimate rare, Power of the Duelist. That is going to be difficult because I have never purchased this card. I've only like bought commons. I think I might have indulged in some super rares at some point, but I don't even really think I have any copies of this because uh, the only ones I would have gotten were out of the Cyber Strike structure because I bought that for Imperm. <laughs> yeah, there's some good stuff in the Cyber Strike one. Well, if Future Fusion is anything to go by, it's going to be pretty high. Um, but Future Fusion is playable in Edison and multiple strategies like uh, TV Hero, Disaster Dragons, uh, whereas Overload is really just a, uh, a machine-only card and gadgets are not good in Edison. Nobody plays Perfect Circle format as a retro format uh, unless they're crazy. And I don't even think, uh, I think side, Cyber Dragon players now, if they're still coping on their pet deck, are maybe <laughs> playing one of this, but they're probably playing Cyber Load Fusion. I don't anticipate them playing Overload Fusion, so this might be a cheaper one. I really wish I had the higher or lower on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I really should have just gone for the guess of half of my price for that I bought it for for the yeah Institute. it wouldn't have cost you any points there because you would have spent an extra three dollars off so this card it's just it's not played I don't anticipate I mean yeah it's a popular Cyber Dragon card nichely popular like I don't I don't even know uh, literally I don't think modern modern builds play this let's go for thirty I'll lock the uh, let's do thirty thirty dollars. All right, Overload Fusion, first edition from Power of the Duelist. This card is $54. Really? Yeah, you were right around, you said under 50, and I was like, if he just goes just under 50, he's gonna be pretty good. Dang, that's crazy. I wouldn't have anticipated it on it being over 50. Well, when you laid everything out, I was like, man, he's making a good case for it not being very expensive. Because first you said Future Fusion. I was like, it is way cheaper than yeah, Future no, Fusion. Yeah, no, I knew it was way cheaper than <laughs> yeah. Future Fusion. But yeah, I guess just like it's, I mean, it's an ultimate rare that's been played before and it's like somewhat related to anime, you know, so I guess that has some draw to it. But yeah, the 54 is, I guess, not that crazy when you consider some of the current meta cards. But at the same time, like since it's not really being used, you know, it's pretty high so your final card is not junk speeder Dang. your final card is dark requiem xyz dragon Ooh, dark requiem xyz dragon i was just playing this in sue ship so do you know the year and the set of the original printing then oh god that's that's gonna be a difficult one because <laughs> i don't remember what it was in in the physical card game oh geez was this like a dimension of chaos card no i wasn't playing did you say Dark Requiem or did you say Arc Rebellion? Dark Requiem. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I was not playing that in Sue Ship. I was playing Arc <laughs> Rebellion. My brain <laughs> forgot that that's the other version or the that's the rank up. They are very similar. Where were the other 5Ds or not 5Ds, Arc 5 Dimensional Dragons in? Because I know Starving Venom Fusion Dragon was the cover card of Invasion Vengeance. Um... Because I think Invasion uh, Invasion Vengeance was like right before Raging Tempest, which was like Zodiac format. So that's like 2017. Um, yeah, I think that's the safe. That's a safe guess. Let's go with Invasion Vengeance 2017. Final answer. Final answer. This card was first printed in Invasion Vengeance, which was released on November 4th, 2016. 
Oh, it was a 2016. I thought that was a 2017 set. Jeez. Yeah, the uh, Raging Tempest was like, I think the first set of 2017. So you, I think you nailed it. You're just one set off. I was one set off. I thought this was the February set and that, that uh, Raging Tempest was the You've done that like three the times set. on these. You thought it was the February, but it's actually the November. So you're so oh, close. I'm so mad. So pretty good. You got the set right. Do you remember the original rarity? I believe it was a secret rare out of that set because uh, that would fall in line with well like, the other you have a lifeline here time. which will give you two guesses if you want to be sure yeah let's do the lifeline here because this is the last card and i'll just guess secret right out first and you didn't need it anyway so you got it <laughs> i just figured cool. i'd remind you okay so you are now up to 15 points you've got two questions points. left if okay. you get this multiple choice and you get it exactly right you will have 20 which will be the next one. Simo got 19 and Lewis got 18. So Ooh. you're pr you're right in the ballpark. You could pass oh, him. I have you to, like, just lose get to this him. price on the money if I want this. All right. So you got to get this multiple choice first for the for the next point. So how many printings do you think this has? A3, B7, C6, or D4? So we have the Invasion Vengeance Secret. This was after the era of ulties in core sets. So that is not in there but I do recall it having an OTS ulti, so that puts us at two. I swear, if I'm going to mix these up with the Dark Rebellion printings, I'm going to be very mad. <laughs> is, this, is this why you picked Dark Requiem is just to screw with uh, my brain because I was going to mix this up in Dark Rebellion? I didn't do that on purpose, but as I was researching this, I almost got it confused as well. So. Oh, that's funny. I was like, that'll make okay. it harder. So perfect. Oh, I just remembered. You know what set you've been opening up for the Ghost Rare Dark Magician lately? Well, wow, which set was that? Ghost from the Past. Uh, I recall seeing this as an ultra rare in there. So that, that brings us up to three. Okay. To hedge my bets, you know, I mentioned earlier the Legendary Hero decks, which I know Phantom Knights is in. So I would not be surprised if that's like uh, one of the hollows in there, if not a common. So you, in theory, you've eliminated A if you're correct on all those. This is too new of a card. I don't think they would have printed it more, especially because it wasn't that good. Like, because uh, they basically replaced this with Arc Rebellion, which was the other rank five later. I think we're going to lock it in at four. Were you able to get another point? The answer is D, four. Yes. And yes, you were correct Zemo. yet again. <laughs> <laughs> on all the printings, it was a legendary hero deck common, oh, okay. and then it was in Ghosts from the Past, of course, and then those other two, the ulti and the original print that you mentioned. So, but you're up to 16 now, so four points get you all the way to 20, which is the next level. No one's ever gotten to 20 yet. 19 Simo, if you want to match him. 18 is Lewis, so, and then 17 is, means you have the worst score. I yet, have so you don't to want get to be the a worst. perfect guess to be yes, Alex. You do. Yeah. But you could tie him, which wouldn't be bad either. I need to manifest this in my soul. You got this. Okay. What is the price of the OTS 15 Ultimate Printing? Oh, this is the same set that had Droplet, right? OTS Because I remember 15. this was like the pull. I remember pulling one of these and being like, dang, this card stinks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Droplet, that's for sure. No, it is absolutely not Droplet. Uh, I don't remember what the third ulti was in here. Was this Dogmatic Ecclesia? No, I think Ecclesia is newer, I think. There's no real process of elimination here. It really is just guess the price and hope to God you're correct. This does not seem like an expensive card, but I know it has to be at least more than $10 because I think that was like the baseline you said it was supposed to be. Yeah, minimum is $10 for this. I'm so tempted to just go with the minimum. It would be so funny. You know what would be funnier? If I just went $1 higher. It's just called 11. Switch to 11. Hey, you've been $1 off before. That is true. You know, now <laughs> that you say it, I think we're going to lock it in at 11 because I do not see anybody buying this card whatsoever. You're locking it at 11. You're sure let's, about $11. Let's do $11. All right. He's guessing 11 bucks. Okay. First of all, Sean, this card was not in the same set as Droplet. No. Oh, I thought Droplet was... 15, I guess it was 16. Chris Strawn, Halka Fibrax, and Arm Dragon level 10 oh, with your other two options. Okay. Oh yeah, Arm Dragon level 10. God, I was thinking OTS 16 then. Yeah, OTS 16 I think was Droplet. And then 17 yeah. was Imperm, I believe. Imperm, yeah. I've got good news and I've got bad news. <laughs> good news and bad news. I don't like bad news, but tell that one first. The bad news is also going to tell you the good news. <laughs> well then why separate it? Just because it's more fun. And uh, okay. <laughs> here's the bad news. The correct answer is $10. <laughs> I'm so mad. 
<laughs> the good news is you tied Simo. You got three points on this one. So you're, you're at 19. I can't believe it. I really missed it by a dollar again. You were on 10 for the meme and then you changed it for an extra meme to 11 and then you missed it by one. I'm so sad. The good side is you went on an insane streak here and ended up with 19 points after having like three points in the first two cards. So honestly, pretty, pretty strong performance. How do you feel about it? I feel decent. Kind of disappointed that I did not beat both Simo and uh, and Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! But, you know, if I can stay tied with one of them, we'll, we'll see if I, I remain the top of the chart. Probably not for long. But we, I, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to do as well as I did. Uh, I was really expecting to do absolutely poorly. But I guess uh, some of the newer cards definitely kind of busted me out there. Honestly, you did pretty well. And uh, and it's going to be hard to top. Like the, if somebody can do what you did from card three through five, like the whole time, that's when you can really get into those crazy prizes. And at this point, like it looks hard, you know, it is a hard, hard quiz, but I know somebody's gonna come in here and they're just gonna know everything and they're gonna get like 38 points or something like that at some point. So well done. You may be a Poke Pokemon challenge YouTuber, but you know your Yu-Gi-Oh. I try my best. I, uh, I spend way too much time on this game as evidenced by my 500 hours in Duel Links in the past month and a half, but uh, we don't talk about that, you know? All right, guys, make sure you guys go check out Chaotic Meatball and his Pokemon stuff. He also has a Yu-Gi-Oh! channel that, uh, you know, what's it called again? It is dead right now. It's dead? You're not even posting? I, I know, I had... <laughs> It's a long story, but no, I'm no longer posting. All this Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge is going to waste. It really is. Uh, Cuz every time I post a, if I post a Yu-Gi-Oh challenge video on my main channel, it it gets only like 5k views. <laughs> Hey, that's, that's like me opening Pokemon cards. I totally feel you. So but thank you again, Sean, Chaotic Meatball, for coming on. It's been super fun. And I will see you guys in the next Guess That Price episode. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Guess That Price. If you did, go check out season one right here or some previous episodes from season two here. Shout out to Tom Fo Show, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Dien, America Deutster, Brad, KK Beats, and Anatai Show, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Robert F., Thomas McLean, Chang and Joey Castle. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.